Hi, my name is Midori Gonzalez. I did most of this research while I was a student at Cal State Fullerton, and today I'm so excited to be sharing it with you. We will be exploring the utility, the utility box murals of Glendale, California. Here's my abstract and a quick little outline of what I'll be talking about today. And before we get into the bulk of things, I would like to give you some introductory background information. So you can see a map of Glendale that shows the city boundaries. And uh, this map, along with all the others that you'll be seeing in this presentation today, were created by myself. So just some quick facts about Glendale. It's located in the San Fernando Valley. It's just above the city of Los Angeles. It's the fourth largest city in LA County, and the population is just over 200,000. Now so that you can get a better um, idea of the surrounding area, I have put this locator map for you to see on the left. And you can see Glendale within the context of the greater Los Angeles metropolitan area. Now, Glendale has a larger white population and a smaller Hispanic population than LA County, but I thought it was really interesting and important to note the demographics of the city for the purposes of understanding the context of what we'll be talking about today. So, even though Glendale is less diverse than the county as a whole, it still has a variety of ethnicities and that needs it to have a high level of diversity. So for example, Armenians actually make up 30% of Glendale's population and within the Hispanic population of Glendale, 60% of them are Mexican. Now I'll be talking about the Beyond the Box Public Art Program. So this right here in the photo is a utility box and you have probably seen them in a city near you. Um, they're often at intersections or near traffic lights. They're very important for the successful function of a city. But you may have never seen them like this before. What the city has done has is they have decided to beautify them by putting public art on them. So this Beyond the Box program is sponsored by the city of Glendale and by the Arts and Culture Commission. And every year, the city selects an amount of boxes that they want to have painted or repainted. There's an annual call for artists in the spring. And then in fall, the selected artists get to paint on the boxes and they receive a stipend for their work. According to the city website, the goals of the program are to beautify the city, to create civic pride, and to insert art in unexpected places. The purpose of this research is to examine the spatial distribution and the thematic patterns of the utility box murals so that we can better understand the outcomes of the Beyond the Box program in the city of Glendale. So I wanted to know how the utility box murals mark the cultural landscape in Glendale. This was the guiding question of my research. That led me to ask two further interrelated questions. The first is, where are the utility box murals in Glendale and what thematic elements are included in the art? These questions would help me to understand how the murals function in the environment especially in relation to the program's outcomes as a whole. So for the study methods, the study area boundaries were within the city of Glendale, and the primary data was collected during field surveys in spring 2022. And the field surveys consisted of looking at land use and public art and photographing these observations. And I mapped every utility box that I could find um, that had art on it. And I used secondary data from um, various sources to help put the research findings into context. 
be talking about my results. So first, I'll discuss the urban geography of Glendale's utility box mills. At the time of field surveys, there were 140 active utility box murals, and I'm referring to them as active because public art is ephemeral and dynamic by nature, and so as a result, these pieces of infrastructure that have public art on them are also going to be ephemeral and dynamic. Um, and this is because that infrastructure is in a city, and cities change quickly, and they are vulnerable to damage and change. This is just um, active murals as of spring 2022. And then we can see they are you know, spread all over the city and they're highly concentrated in this downtown area. So I've provided you with an inset map so that you can get a better idea of the scope. And the next result of importance is um, land use. Most of these murals were in commercial areas and another um, about 25% of the murals were in residential areas. So those were the two land uses with the highest concentration of utility box murals. The next result that I'll be talking about is the cultural landscapes of Glendale's utility box murals. So I categorized all of the murals by thematic element and most of the murals fit into people or nature categories. So those are the first two categories that I will be talking about. So here are some examples of people as a thematic element and anybody, any resident, person passing by, they might feel like they see themselves or their lifestyle reflected in this artwork. Here is a collection of murals that have some type of cultural connection, but are still within that people category. So it's possible that the diverse population can take pride in seeing this cultural representation. And the second big category was nature. And within nature, there were multiple subcategories. So the first is plants. We can see all these um, kind of natural, botanical, garden-related floral artwork. And then I also observed a lot of bird murals. There were also many with dogs as the main subject. And then here are just some more various types of animals in the nature category. So aside from people and nature, there were other categories of thematic elements that were not as common, but were still widespread throughout the city. So those were abstract or object related, place-based or messages. So I'll be showing you pictures of those next. So here are some examples of the abstract themed art. These are also falling within the abstract category but if you notice, all of these murals are showing things that we would see in our everyday life. They're mirror mirroring things that, that are real, but just showing them in a different and maybe unexpected way. And then we have place-based murals. And then we have place-based murals, which reflect both the natural and built environment of the city of Glendale and look as if they fit right in. These are also place-based murals, but they are tied more to the history and the culture of the city. And lastly, we have the murals within the messages category. So the first subcategory within messages is 
of diversity and unity. And the second subcategory within messages is inspiration. So these all have some type of inspirational message to kind of help uplift. So next is discussion, and I'll be talking about my first observation, which is related to the spatial distribution of these utility box murals over time. And so I've made a series of maps that depicts the art um, as different colors depending on which year that it was added. So we can see 2014, the first year of the program, all of the murals are in red. 2015 in orange. 2016 in yellow. 2017 in green. 2018 in blue. 2019 in purple, 2020 in brown, and 2021 in black. Just some important map observations that I would like to bring your attention to. We can see that they're spread throughout the city with the exception of this area that is, um, we could see it's Verdugo Mountains Open Space Preserve. So there's mountains and um, nature there. We can also see that some years follow certain streets or arteries. For example, up here we see orange, which was 2015, and red, which was 2014. And um, maybe the most notable example is that in 2020, all of the murals were installed along Grand Boulevard, and we can see that in this brown color. And we can also see that some years, the expansion seemed to be in a seemed to be horizontal in an east-west direction. Next, I'd like to talk about what I observed: the functions of the different thematic elements of the murals to be. These cultural landscapes have varying functions, which are influenced by what thematic elements that we see on them. So any of the murals that have people painted within them, they help to humanize the city. Any of the murals that have nature elements help to soften the built environment. Any of the murals that have messages in them, they help to uplift and inspire and create a sense of community. And together, all of these different thematic elements that we see within this artwork helps to connect the history, the culture, and the residents, which help to serve to beautify the city and to create some inviting infrastructure. My third observation about the Beyond the Box program outcomes is based on my map observation and my thematic ob element observations that we just discussed. Based on what we've talked about so far, we can see that, that the Beyond the Box program be considered successful. It has increased the visibility and presence of public art, and it has made public art accessible to many viewers. We know that it's successful because it's been, because this program has been done for many years and it has expanded across the city. And there are less barriers for artist participation when comparing boxes to painting murals on walls. This is probably because boxes are more abundant than walls Boxes are cheaper to paint than walls, and it's also easier to get permission to paint on a box than it is to get permission to paint on a wall. There is, however, one limitation or trade-off, and that is that the art has to be approved by the city, and so the artists are limited by, by what kind of art that they can paint on the boxes. We generally expect public art to be in commercial areas, in very developed areas where maybe there's a lot of commerce or business happening, where there's a lot of people. We don't usually expect public art to be in residential areas. Glendale was able to insert public art 
into the suburbs. And we can see that here. They made it possible for people to see art right outside of their houses. You can also see art in other unexpected places where maybe we're not sure about what kind of land use this is. There's not really a sidewalk here in this bottom photo. Um, it might be residential, but the point here is that there's no wall, but there is a box. And that is the thing that allows the art to exist in this spot where art would not have been able to exist otherwise. We also see art on corners, which means that people who are traveling and commuting are also able to see it. In conclusion, this presentation has explored the spatial distribution and thematic elements of Glendale's utility box murals, which has helped us to understand how this prevalent yet understudied form of public art marks the cultural landscape in this diverse city. This analysis reveals that the Beyond the Box program has led Glendale to increase the amount of public art throughout the city in a widespread and unexpected way. Utility boxes are necessary for the successful and safe function of a city but the success of this public art program has elevated essential urban infrastructure into objects of cultural and aesthetic value that the community can engage with and enjoy. That brings us to the end. Thank you. I'd be happy to take any questions.